Medianoche. 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 Podcast, 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 podcast. One, two, one, two. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, welcome back. Medianoche Podcast, Miami, Florida. You already know. Let's get this popping, man. How's it going, everybody? This is Art Morera. Welcome back to the Medianoche Podcast, episode 26, based out of Miami, Florida. This episode is uh, is tight, man. I'm excited for the guest that I have here today. Um, I've been a fan of his artwork for whew, years, you know, especially, well, we'll get into uh, all the nitty gritty, but the artist that I have here today is Jeff Decal. Decal, what's up, man? What up? How are we, bro? Uh, doing all right, man. Thank you for coming through, man. No, no problem. The last time that I saw you was at the Comic Con. Do you remember? You were at the table illustrating. I just walked up to you like, "Decal, what's up?" And you was like in the middle of, uh, of drawing something. I remember seeing you. I just don't remember which which con it was because I do you know I do a bunch of them. For real, that's wild, man. <laughs> well, like you know, I mean, hey, might as well get into it, bro. Like, you know, the first time that I was put on to you, you were doing Mayday covers. Yeah, I you met know? you to what two thousand eight. Yeah, Nine. It, it seems like it's been like a decade it's already. It's been a while, man. You know? And, um, like, those covers, the thing is, is that underground hip-hop, it seems like underground hip-hop is, um, is the artwork for out- underground albums are usually, like, paintings. Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. usually, like, an artist with the, you know, the right. photograph. Right. Like, is that, um, did the people that would hit you up for artwork kind of tell you that look man i kind of want a painting for the cover because that's kind of like yeah how underground hip-hop is like um it's not necessary i mean yeah like underground hip-hop is linked to more you know artistic styled album covers but um if someone's contacting me it's because they want a painting that you know they want an illustration obviously Uh, i'm not a photographer obviously so um so yeah they just want to go that route um but like you said yeah the more commercialized stuff is you know a photo of the artist posing by a, a car or whatever, a building, a wall, a graffiti, I don't know. Um, not, you know, not necessarily just cliche stuff, but, you know, it's a photo because they want to be instantly recognized um, for who they are so they could get the attention or, or whatever it is. Um, even though my style is, you know, pretty realistic and I can capture a likeness, you know, uh, you know, pretty close to the photo. Um I don't know. I guess more like the labels usually just want to go the photo route just to be safe, uh, I guess. And then, yeah, like you said, it's more connected to the indie artists where they're not on a label. You know, they're not they don't have a, uh, you know, somebody on top of them dictating what kind of cover they need to have or whatever. Um, But then the Mayday stuff, you know, they're on Strange, but it's like a cool indie label that lets them kind of have control. Um, they've had, you know, they've had some photos, some photographic covers, but obviously most of their covers are paintings because they're fucking down as fuck, you know? So, Hell yeah. Yeah. Nah, man, like, listen, like, I didn't even fully realize how many people from the city have, like, reached out to you, you know, to do something for them. I have, okay, like, my homie Shakespeare, you did something yeah. with him holding onto a skull, you yeah, know? Yeah, a while ago, man. I don't think he ever put that out, but that was, I actually, I like that, I really like that one, and he's a super cool dude. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was, geez, that was a, a long time ago. Matter of fact, hold on, let me think. I know you did Shakespeare stuff, you did Mayday's uh, album covers. Um, you just did the, their new one, right, for South of Fifth? That's yeah. you, right? Mm-hmm. It's funny, like, I can already recognize your style of illustration off rip, you know? Yeah, man. I got a business card from the singer the other day, Megan Melancholy. Yeah, yeah. And Again, like, I met her so long. I, mean, I was in college when I met her. Damn, for real? That's wild. Yeah. I had just met her. You know, it's crazy how the city is, right? Like, we all live here, right. but it's so spread out, not spread out, but like it's so um, vast with how many artists that yeah. they could be here their whole lives and I can meet them a week ago, but they've known you as long as I've known you right. or longer. Right. That's crazy, right? Yeah. And she's super eclectic, man. Her her sound, I, she's very unique, man. She 
she's a poet she raps she sings beautifully and then the way she combines them all together is uh is really unique man i i, I think i think she's great yeah um, you know like come to find out now that i'm thinking about it you know i was waiting for you to arrive and yeah. like i had just finished making a beat or whatever but like now that i think about it you kind of became the go-to album <laughs> cover artist for the indie market here you did jay nix yeah project it's just crazy i remember seeing a time lapse of your making of it yeah yeah that was one of the few time lapses i ever made actually yeah i recorded that and then they put that to one of the one of the songs and they made like a video damn it's wild man yeah. how long have you been illustrating for uh you know there's a few answers to that uh, i've been drawing since i was a child very young um like professionally illustrating um uh well i know you know the, the term professionals is uh, is a weird word uh you know sometimes it means you know making money off of a project but man you could just make a few bucks or, or whatever so like what does you know professional really mean but right. my first album cover i ever did was for the deadbeats writers lab in 2005 or six uh live chaos nauseous and cadet um, mm -hmm. they were in that they were in the group and they're my friend, you know, I mean, there's, I haven't seen them in a little bit, um, but, you know, they're my friends and I just did their cover just because they're my friends, you know, when I was in college. Um, so I think that kind of marks the the beginning. You said 2005. Did you used to go to the hip hop shows back in Of course. The, like the MC yeah. Battle, for real? Yeah. Man, that's wild. Yeah. The f yeah. I mean, I was doing graffiti in high school. Um, so I, I started doing graffiti when I was 15. So that was 2000. And then that's when I started going to the shows. I mean, the Breakers dozen that those were <laughs> oh, crazy. You know, man. that was that was it for that 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 era, and um, that was a that was like the mixture of all the elements of hip hop in South Florida. That was the first hip hop show that I went to as a teenager. Right, like the first battle. I used to battle in high school. Right, like, you know, ciphers, and then yeah. I got the guts to go to a show. Yeah, and I signed up. And the I, I I passed the first round, and then the second I was sixteen. Yeah. The the guy that I battled in the second round was recognized. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you know, like he beat me, but just by a little bit. Yo, he. <laughs> nah, <I'm just> <laughs> I mean, man, we we can do a whole podcast on him, but like, god damn, like I I never I didn't I don't remember when I actually like met him face to face, but I knew him. I knew I watched all those battles, man. I would, you know, uh, we would be doing graffiti outside. They'd be breaking inside. They'd be break dancing inside, and then uh, and then I think like the MC battles would be kind of like towards the end of the night. Like all the the breaker stuff would go first, and then when they were done breaking, um, then they then they battle. And when the battle started, I dropped my cans and I came inside because mm, that wild. was because I wanted to see that. And he would just destroy people, man. It was amazing. Like I had never seen an MC on that, on that level before, man. I mean, I, you know, I was young too. It's not like I saw a million MCs at that time. But I mean, regardless, like the shit he the shit he did at those shows was amazing, man. So, like, you grew up a hip hop head, would you say? Yeah, man. I mean, like, it was. <laughs> I remember being in third grade. I think I got. I think. Puff Daddy and the Family came make, came out that that album came out when yeah. I was like in third grade or something Mace you know like that the, that's time I mean that's kind of you know uh, that's my era I know Method Man and Wu Tang came out when I was in ele elementary school Tupac um, uh, yeah I and I remember I mean Tupac died what in ninety five but Nin I ninety six yeah ninety six but I I remember him alive so I mean I was in ninety five I was ten. So yeah, I've been listening to hip hop since I was like nine or ten years old, which is which is funny as fuck. Did you ever used to go on like artcrimes.com? For sure. Oh fuck yeah. 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 For sure. Like, would yeah. you like print out the pieces and like? I mean, back in the day, was that was kind of the thing to do? Like, yeah, print, and then, print out and then just have them in a binder or something. Um, I don't know if I print them out, but we would go on. We would we would get the magazines. They had uh, like twelve ounce profit. Mm. Uh, they had a bunch of uh, graph mags. Um, I don't even remember where I would get them. Pro uh, probably like Underground Hip Hop, the, the store on, on yeah. Oakland Boulevard yeah, in, in, yeah. Uh, in, in, in o o Oakland Park, I guess, in the city or Sunrise or whatever. But um, yeah, that's where we would get our spray paint uh, can, spray paint tips and Montana cans and all that stuff back, back in back in that time. Yeah, 
Fire. Damn, that's mm-hmm. wild, man. It's, I'm actually uh, pleased to hear that like you have a, a background in graffiti and like yeah. underground hip hop. The reason why I'm saying that is because all the artwork that you did for the album covers, not not for nothing, but it's it doesn't look like a graffiti figure, a character. It looks just it just looks like full blown just artwork. Right. You know? So like I always drew faces. I always liked drawing faces. Um even when I was a kid, and then I then then I did graffiti, and I got heavily influenced by all the distorted, like weirdo kind of characters. But I always still kind of would draw portraits out of magazines every now and then, and draw from photos. I like I got like I always did that. I always enjoyed that, um, and that's something that's important is enjoying it because there's a lot of artists that I that I know and love, and I love their style, but they're not into portraiture or whatever, you know. But you know their style is amazing for other other things. Um, but I, I, I enjoy portraiture a lot and, um, it, I, it kind of went on the back burner when I was in high school. Cause that's when I was doing all the graffiti and stuff, but I always did a little bit. And then when I got into college and I started taking my art history classes and all that stuff and learning about all the old masters and everybody knows about Da Vinci and Michelangelo cause they're just kind of the, the forefront, but learning about it, French impressionism and, and Baroque, the Baroque time period and mm. all that stuff like it just inspired me so much man and then that and then taking figure drawing classes drawing the nude model all these things um i did all that when i when i was in school um so that got me back into portraiture and drawing realistically and um um and just capturing likenesses and 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 doing stuff like that and that's when i really started going full throttle and 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 at the same time um since i was going to school there wasn't as many people doing graffiti you know graduating you know when you leave high school you know your whole life kind of can, can change yeah um so yeah so i kind of exited always still into hip-hop but just kind of exited the graffiti scene and entered the more illustration fine art scene and that's kind of when my art made like a really big transition do you feel like man do you feel like now that you say that that graffiti is more of like uh i don't i'm gonna use this word for the age range that it fits in but the graffiti is kind of more of a juvenile phase of like artwork and then once you graduate and you have real life think you got to make money somehow whatever that is kind of a little tricky to monetize graffiti uh absolutely i got into a conversation with somebody recently and i described graffiti as like a road with a dead end and at the end of that and right at that dead end is a trampoline (laughs) Mm. and it's like if you if you put in the work and you put in the leg work and, and, and you got your legs strong enough, so when you get to that trampoline, you could jump and and and, and who knows where you where you're gonna land, you know? So like so I jumped and I landed in the illustration field and now in the comics field. Um, other graffiti artists that I that I came up with jumped and they landed in like the mural scene. Um, there's a few guys that do super professional murals. Um, uh, not not street art like murals for like com- like companies you know so um you know so kind of so graffiti kind of took them there um then you have then you have um graffiti artists that that um uh, that do street that get paid to do crazy big street art murals and and put their work in galleries and it's kind of like a version of their graph but like kind of abstract you know or like kind of leaning towards the modern art kind of kind of feel kind of like a uh in between space between graffiti and modern art um so yeah i mean there's there's avenues it's just how creative you can get with uh where you want to go when you get to the end of that road because the road ends man like can't be doing run around spray painting doing illegal graffiti forever and yeah like you said you grow up you gotta make money you gotta pay bills you gotta get past it so um yeah i mean graffiti if you look hard enough, you might see a little bit of influence in my illustration stuff. That's the kind of the way I make shapes. Um, but yeah, I, I I let it go. You know? Nah, and even like your signature is a little write up, man. It's a little tag, you know. That remains, man. That's like my tag, and it's and every time I do it, I just kind of it's just hilarious, man, because that would get me in a lot of trouble at one point in my life and now i'm i'm putting it on comic book covers and album covers and and uh it's just kind of funny to see something that meant one thing at one time that just means something totally different now but i it kind of transcended through it kind of like 
I, I'm unable to get rid of decal. Like I can't get rid of it. Like it's not my real name. It's my tag name, you know. And it's uh, it's just I've I've kept it and and that and it just remains, you know. Just it's a part of part of my history. It's funny, like you saying that. I can kind of see some parallels on how graffiti artists will make that transition. They'll blossom into a full blown artist, but then every now and then they'll post like a little picture of like a little throw up in their yeah. black book or some almost like for the culture. Let me just show that yeah, I still yeah, got yeah. this. It's the same thing with like an MC that transitions to like a recording artist and a songwriter. Yeah. And then every now and then around the homies, they'll bust a little freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like a freestyle for MCs is like throw ups for right. art, for illustrators, you know? And it's funny because if, if I did like a little throw up right now, it would be, it would look like what I was, it would look like the graffiti I was doing in like 2006 because that's when I kind of stopped. So like that, my evolution of graffiti kind of stopped at that time. So anything I do now and in the future would just basically be at the end of my road uh, of graffiti. It would look like that because I never, I just stopped e evolving with it. Um, and now I just focus on figures um, and faces and, and, you know, style of illustration and portraiture and stuff. So, I mean, that's what I want to just never stop evolving with. You know, I never want... Um, I, I, you know, I want you to be able, however old I, I get, uh, you know, however, however long I live, I, I, I would want you to always kind of be able to look at a certain time period in my artwork and say, oh, he did that in his 20s, his 30s, his 40s, his 50s, or whatever, you know, mm. you got, I, I never want that evolution to, to stop, you, you know. Do you listen to music while you, while you, while you draw and you do your pieces? Um, occasionally I don't like need to, um, um, I listen to tons of podcasts and stuff. I mean, I just, I, I work so much that it's just like, there's only so much music I can listen to. And, uh, I hear you. Uh, but you know what? Um, some pieces I need a more mellow tone and then some pieces I do need some energy going. So if I am working on a piece where I need some energy that I will tend to definitely listen to music rap, you know? Um, if it's something I need more concentration on, I'll, I'll probably stick with the podcast, you know? Okay. And like, aside from, from rap, like, I mean, what type of music, what are you listening to nowadays? Just overall? Um, uh, I love like, oh, there's all these like obscure bands. I don't even know the name of cause like people kind of just turn me on to them. Um, True Widow is like a, a band that I like and like, it's totally not like, there it's kind of like a uh, rock it's not ugh, I, I'm, I'm gonna sound stupid talking about it because no, i because no, I, cool, I, cool. I don't know like i'm not i don't know how to talk about the different genres uh of music because i don't pay that much attention i just kind of know what i like uh i like yeah, stuff yeah. like that i like um like glass animals and i like uh uh fuck man i'm totally gonna blank right now I, no no it's cool it's cool yeah but if you know glass animals like kind of weird weird it's kind of stuff like that. Like I if like, I were to turn on Glass Animals on Pandora, exa that yeah, channel, all the related stuff. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, for sure. Yeah, Glass Animals, True Widow, and then uh, and then even rap, man. My my the stuff that the, the rap I like has gotten so narrow. Um, yeah, I hear you. It's just it's changed. I don't even I don't I don't even gotta tell you because I'm sure you know about it. Well, like you know, it's funny you say that because it's almost like when we're when we're younger, we're all music since we're younger and we're earlier in our life yeah. like everything is new and more impressionable to us and right. then and then and then and and, I, and i've talked about this before when you're young the rappers are older than you now we're growing up and now all the rappers are younger than us and like i don't give a fuck what they're talking about because they're because right. they're younger you know like right, they're they're, right. ta they're not they're talking about stuff that i'm that i don't relate to which is why like like and on that note I have grown to appreciate at, at, at like okay when I was younger for example I uh it just came in the mail today I bought on Amazon LP's um Revenge of the Robots DVD right right it was a tour DVD whatever but even the documentary the way it was filmed and edited is super dope mm -hmm. but like when I was younger I was put on to like you know atmosphere idea which are obviously mm -hmm. they're legends but I kind of was a little dismissive of LP mm -hmm. And then now he's doing Run the Jewels and all that, which is great. Good for him. But I went back and I listened to the Cannibal Ox mm. and the Fantastic Damage. And I'm like, yo, this is like, this is later years hip hop, mm -hmm. you know? Like same thing with Aesop too. But I feel like Aesop has a funny way of 
appealing to the young and the older as they age mm -hmm. you know but like nowadays all these artists that i used to listen to man i've I like I have narrowed down to just my little playlist of mm. artists, you know. I can totally understand, like yeah. for sure. Like you know, what's a what's a style artwork that I would say that I you know I I I almost wouldn't even be surprised if I see you doing something like this in the future. But like, did you ever used to play like Metal Gear Solid? I uh, never played Metal Gear Solid. No, nah? no. Nah. Like it's funny, like that illustration, like it's somewhat in the same universe as like your approach to like you know swirls and stuff around right. the human uh, around the body you know right, right. but like man like so I, I remember I, you know when i went to comic-con and like so now back right when mm -hmm. i saw you that day yeah. you were drawing and i mean it's just crazy like you say that you go to a lot of them like you spend a lot of time traveling uh yeah i guess i probably do seven to twelve of them a year Mm. um and it's just it's a blessing man um to 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 travel and for people to know who i am is uh amazing yeah just su super amazing um yeah. but yeah and and uh working for marvel obviously uh is responsible for that you know like marvel is responsible for uh, my notoriety at these comic cons and in that world um so like like for for the you know for the listeners and also for me too since i don't really haven't chatted with you uh really since then but like man how that happened bro congrats man <laughs> you know like you got linked up with marvel that's that's wild i have a magazine here that you saw of the double xl with m m with the punisher and like yeah. like how does it feel man to like be in to, to be to work for just marvel man how does that work how does that feel that's a big deal man um it's a real big deal. It was not something I ever thought I could do. It was not something I ever tried to do. Um, I've told this story a bunch of times. I'll tell it again, though. I was at Supercon 2012. That's the Florida Comic-Con. Um, and I had nothing comic-related. My art, I had never done anything comics. Um, I loved them as a kid. Watched X-Men cartoons, collected uh, the cards, collected the comics uh, when I was a kid. But it wasn't something I, I never thought I could be a comic book artist or anything like that. It was never, it was never a goal or an aspiration of mine. Um, but I loved it, uh, like always. Um, but I had, you know, I had like enough, uh, you know, I had been doing like live art at bars and, and hip hop shows. So I had prints, you know, I had, I had some merchandise and uh, I just said, oh, you know, fuck it, I'm going to, you know, the table wasn't expensive. I said, let me, I'm going to get a table. I have enough stuff to sell. Let me, let me see how I do. Um, so I did. Uh, and when I was there, there was a, um, another artist and I just said, hey, man, I like how, how I work for, Mar like he worked for Marvel. Um, I said, how do I work for Marvel? Just like on a whim, thinking maybe he can give me an email address or something or whatever, just something, whatever. And he's like, oh, there's a, there's an editor here doing doing portfolio reviews. You should talk to her and show, show her your work. And I said, oh, perfect. Um, so I, I did. I, I, I showed her my work. She liked it. And she gave me a shot. And it sounds simple, but I mean, just in that, whatever, 15 seconds, I just 20 seconds I took describing that, you know, doesn't account for the decades of work that i put in for my art i've been drawn for for so long i put in so much work so much sacrifice to get my work to look to look like what it did for that editor to recognize it and to like it and to give me a shot um so i did 10 covers for a book called journey into mystery um uh 2012 2013 and then that editor left marvel so that was it as far as her giving me more work and then from that point on it was all all up to me to just continue uh just hustling and 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 uh add, try, trying to meet people and and traveling now now i would be now i did now i would travel to show in uh 2012 2013 i did travel out of state for conventions um i have some friends that uh, own a company called Creature Entertainment. They're local to Miami. They're an independent comic book publisher, and they're my friends. And they said, "Oh, you are from Marvel now. Now you now you have to travel." And I'm like, "Man, I just done a couple covers. Like whatever." They're like, "No." They're like, "People will know you now." Um, and I didn't believe them until I went to a show. I went to Heroes Con, which is in Charlotte. That was my first out of state show, and uh, 
And it was amazing, man. People knew who I was, and they were bringing me the books to sign, and that was the first time that that had ever happened for me. Damn. Um, and yeah, it was it was a really, really great feeling, and I was super humbled, and I really just appreciated that so much. Um, That's got to be so gratifying, bro. Yeah, it was amazing, man. Um, and then I met, uh, I met some people from Valiant Comics at that show, and they gave me some work. Um, and then it just, I just kept putting in the legwork. I just kept hustling and going to shows and um, <clears throat> just investing my money uh, in travel expenses and just doing it. Uh, something that I never wanted to do before I worked for Marvel because I was like, how do you make back the money on a hotel and a, and a, and a, and a plane ticket and all that stuff? It's like, you got to make so much money just to make nothing and then to start making money right. at these shows. Um, but now that I had put in that work for Marvel, uh, I was able to, I was able to cover my expenses and, and do all that stuff. And then it wasn't until years later of continuing work that, that I would become a guest at shows where they would cover some of, some or of my expenses and, and now occasionally cover all of my expenses. Um, but that took, that took five or six years of hustling and working in the industry that didn't happen right away. Um, man, you sound like an an upcoming rapper, yo. <laughs> like all this, if if they didn't know that the that the that you're uh, an illustrator and you're talking about all this this grind of like you know having to pay expenses or not making profit or just sacrificing to go out of town and be, and get yeah, that's exactly what it's like for like just the life of an independent artist. Whether it's music, whether it's visual art, whether it's an actor, you know, trying to get going on going auditions, you know, just the just the independent art, man. Like yeah. looking back right now, looking back. Now that you're you have built yourself up to have leverage and have a demand, right? Now looking back, where you didn't really have that much of a demand to be out there, right? Would you have, worst case scenario, been willing to like stay at a friend's house on their couch, or yeah. like in, yeah. in some crappy motel or something? I stayed at a few shitty hotels. Yeah, 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 yeah. man. That's a. I'm 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 glad to, you saying that adds like. Uh, validation to like what i've been trying to tell some of the homies like yeah yo man listen like be happy that you ride in the car with four of your homies yeah and it's musky in there just to go out there and perform for 15 minutes right in front of a crowd of 20 people like that's the best you know it right. only comes up from there it really humbles you and makes you hungrier you know a lot of times uh y your caliber of skill is not reflective of your position in your industry you know you could be an amazing artist but you still have to put in you still got to pay your dues you know um um so yeah so <clears throat> if you let your you know your ego and um what you think you deserve get in the way of um that I guess that mo that time of your career where you do need to do the things, all the things that you just stated, um, you know, that can definitely hinder hinder your growth. You know, um, yeah. I mean, I, I see it often. You know, I see artists that I don't feel that their skill level, uh, you know, gets them what they have, and then I see the opposite. You know, it, just, it doesn't matter. Like, forget that. Forget anybody else. Yeah, for sure. Everybody like, has their own set of variables. Everybody has their own set of um, life circumstances, and and everybody's born into their own... You think maybe it's like a little bit of maybe like entitlement too, like artistic entitlement? Like, nah, man, I put in all this work for this piece of art. Like, I deserve this treatment from xyz like i'm not gonna go out there if i don't get that you think there's a little bit uh, of that too? then they don't have to go out there because it don't matter what you deserve all that matters is is what you is what you get you know yes. and it and uh you could deserve the world but if you don't get the world then <laughs> exactly like, what are you gonna do man exactly like, man be yes. bitter be bitter about it be happy about it like it's just it's all about uh it's all about how you uh i forgot the quote man it's like it's something where it's like it's not about I'm um, totally. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, not going to remember it. But it's. <sighs> I hate when that sounds stupid. Trying yeah, to think yeah. about it on a podcast, but you know, it's nah. it's like not about what you get. It's about what you have. I, I don't know, man. Like no, not here. You. It's like yeah. you get what you put in. You yeah. know, like I man, like I'm. I'm not going to lie. As soon as I'm able to travel, like I am looking forward to the rough nights. You know, yeah. I'm looking forward to the rough nights and the dead crowds. I'm looking forward. That's gonna. <laughs> I feel like it makes the movie good. 
you know? Right. Oh, another great quote. Or it's not a quote, but it's, you know, I heard it somewhere. It's like, if you see a movie and the main character never struggles, gets everything he wants, gets, you know, how boring of a movie is that going to be? Right, of course. You're man. watching the movie to, like, you're, you, like, shit needs to be overcame, you know? Like, you, like you need to go through shit uh, in order to, to, to become that, that warrior, you know? Like, to fulfill your destiny, like... Like, how boring of a movie would that be uh, if it's just, like, some rich kid who gets everything he wants and then owns the company and then whatever, I don't know, or, like, some warrior who just, uh, uh, I mean, you know, the the story of, like, Siddhartha, you know, the Buddha, like, he's born into into riches and royalty and, and, he, and, and he, he rejects that, you know, and he takes this whole sabbatical and um, d- d- just relinquishes everything and just lives, uh, like, as a complete... Um, I forgot the term, um, but just gives everything up, food, food everything. Like, um, and then the, yeah. what he learns that through that whole process uh, makes him the enlightened, you know, Buddha. Um, maybe, maybe makes, I, makes him makes him who fulfills his destiny, man. If he just stayed in that in that castle or whatever, like uh, there would be no, there would be nothing, man. Like there, there, that figure, that figure in, in history wouldn't even exist. Yeah, it's like. Maybe that's why, like, you know, rich parents make their kids get regular jobs just to build character. Like, man, struggle course, struggle right. a little bit, you know? Right. Like, speaking of movies, you know, like, what's your favorite Marvel movie so far? Because, man, they're, like, they're, they're pretty on point. Blade. Blade? <laughs> like, what? It's funny, man. Like, not many people realize that Blade is a... Not yeah. many people do. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, man. Okay, for Love sure. Love Blade, man. Like, do you, like, like... But realistically, that movie compared to these new movies, do you is that your answer just to That movie holds up to this day, man. Like yeah, yeah whatever, like it, it's a little dated, but I I I I, I love that movie, man. I, like I just lo- I just really relate to the to the dark solo characters, man. Like I love Logan, you know, like Yeah. Um I love Logan more than Wolverine, you know, like when he's in mm. the like, you know, like just the shit that he went through again a perfect example of that you know if you saw logan like just his the hardships of his life man like made such an interesting story and made that character so interesting um but yeah so okay uh, blade yeah, for sure yeah yeah I, but, I love blade as just as a character man just again just 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 uh just the inner turmoil man he's like half vampire half uh half human his, his his mom died you know all this he's always tr- they're always trying to kill him like they're always after him you know just just so much struggle man you know yeah for sure okay i can see that like i remember uh you know how on the internet they'll show like you know it's these little surveys it's popular now well, which character are you fill out a survey yeah, and yeah. tells you who it is like i like you know i showed my dad like the options of all the superheroes it's all the marvel superheroes you know and my dad also picked Wolverine, he's like, nah, I rock with Wolverine. Yeah. It's funny how Wolverine became like a fan favorite, you know, overall. Maybe it's like so many people identify with just the the struggle, man. You know, the plight. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Like for sure, man. Like, do you, would you say that like aside from the movie, like you know that this guy, this guy's character, Wolverine, is like your favorite superhero? Um, no. Um. Um, so there's a lot of characters I like in my head more than when I read them in the, in the books, you know, because a character is sort of a combination of the creator of the character and who's ever writing the character currently. Okay. Um, so like if I say one of my favorite characters is Iron Fist, I like Iron Fist in my head way more than I like him in the Netflix show. <laughs> you know, the Netflix show is terrible. So that was just uh, like a terrible per- portrayal of one of my favorite characters. So Word. so it's hard for me to say like I have uh, like a favorite character because it's a, it's kind of like a loaded question. Like I said, like, do you like the creator of the character? Do you like the look of the character? Do you like, do you like who's ever writing the character? Because whoever's, whoever's writing the character 
is writing what they're saying and writing their personality. Man, I don't factor um, in none of those things. That's crazy hearing that. Like that really puts in perspective. Like, well, I probably have know. more comic conversations than than you, than you have. <laughs> yeah, 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 for you sure. You know, and every time I talk to people at shows, like, you know, this is kind of the, the kind of stuff that I that I talk about. Like, um, you know, I might get a lot of hate for this, but I like Spider Man a lot more before I read Spider Man and Peter Parker just annoys the shit out of me you know mm, that's funny so but like the look of spider-man like man like there are some badass images of spider-man and he could look so badass but then as soon as peter parker starts cracking these stupid ass jokes while he's in the middle of a serious fight scene oh, I got it you, just I got totally you. removes me from it i got you you know just you know it's um, just like it's just too it's just un it's too unrealistic I'm I'm okay with I'm um, being unrealistic. That's fine. Like I'll suspend my disbelief. It's just whatever I whatever issue I read on that day. Whenever I read it, man, that writer just didn't do it for me, man. Damn. But okay, but it wasn't just that writer because that's how Pete. That's who Peter Parker is. He's just always cracking jokes at you know inappropriate times and whatever. It's like Deadpool can get away with it. You know? right right but, yeah for sure it's you know funny. for me de it's fine dead because that's you know that's deadpool but just yeah i don't know man just i just uh not not spider-man just not just just not for me okay word if you had a if you had an opportunity to like sit in the writing session just to kind of give like your perspective of like would you consider sitting sitting in on a writing session or would you rather just like not even involve yourself to not potentially like mess up the groove that the writers are in yeah i don't care man like okay for sure. it's just there's so much baggage with these characters that have been around for decades and all the fans that are so sensitive that if you change <laughs> one little thing it's this giant internet <laughs> explosion and hey man it's you, they could keep that like you're, i don't want anything to do with that you're just there at a comic con like drawing something and you look up it's this legion of you know, all, right. all you see is pitchforks and torches all they're right. like man you there was supposed to be an exclamation right. point man that's funny man okay i understand yeah so um, it's like if someone commissions me for a character i just like i want to draw that character how i want to draw them you know yeah okay and, and then that, and that's what that's why people would would come to me or a particular artist because they like how that artist will portray that character um so yeah so I leave the writing to the writers, and I leave the visualization to myself and, and gotcha. other other uh, other artists. I mean, some people are just overly invested in in those types of ventures. You know, they'll be like, "Man, if I'm gonna be involved in this, I gotta make sure everything is." Yeah, the they don't got they don't got nothing else to worry about in their life. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, they just got too much time on their hands, man. All the shit that I'd see on the on the, it's I you know I don't feed into it, but I can't escape it because there's a lot of artists that I follow. You know, and. uh you know, stuff gets retweeted and articles get, get posted. And a lot of times, like, I'll see an article. I won't even, I'll just keep scrolling. But then I'll see it two, three, four, five times. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, maybe I should read this. And then it's just always, just people with too much time on their hands, man. Just so upset about just stupid shit, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, I feel like nowadays with the internet, people became too conditioned with being outspoken. And like, as if their opinion is law. Hmm. You know, and then they have a friend at an editorial and they'll put like some clickbaity headline and it's just, man, it just became way too toxic. Like, yeah, I mean, the, like not too long ago, I unfollowed like not even like 600 people. I unfollowed. Mm -hmm. I just I was like, man, what did I become? Like, I, I followed all these. I don't know none of you, you <laughs> know, like just because I chat with you one time doesn't mean that you're you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know, man. Of course, man. But um, yeah, I, 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 I really narrowed down. um my social media stuff uh there's a lot of stuff i don't want to see and sometimes it's hard sometimes it might be a person an artist whatever that uh, that i like you know i might know the know the person personally um or whatever but i just don't want to see the shit that they're posting man you know it's like you know, i say this a lot like a lot of times when i travel i'm not um i'm not on social media at all or very less than normal and um, then when I come back, like I come home and then I, you know, start checking my, all my social media stuff again. And then I realize, wow, man, like this shit, it can really, it really affects your, your, your psyche, man. Like some of the stuff that people post, it's just, it's, 
really unnecessary. Um, just the, uh, the outrage, you know, people want to share their outrage and, uh, it's just like, yeah, it's super toxic for sure. So toxic, man. Just a hundred percent gives a shit, you know, like, oh, like, I wish there was a rule, like for every negative article, if every negative video you post, you have to post a positive one. Cause there's, there's just as much positivity mm. in the world than negativity, but, but positivity does not make the news positivity doesn't make people don't want to share it they want to share the, sh the stuff that they're outraged about they want to they want they want to revel in their outrage mm. they want they want to they want to start an army of people that that are just as upset at them for whatever cause it is and and it's like you know um you know, I, I I'm not gonna deny it. I I check my social media. And I'll be working. I'll be I'll put you know I'll put an hour to a work, and then I want to rest my eyes. You know, you know, look away from my painting, just scroll scroll through my social media feed because because I because you know there's a lot of uh, like I follow a lot of a lot of like on Twitter. Like I follow like some cool accounts like that post like like cool pictures and and uh, you know just just stuff that I want to see. Just just cool shit. And then you have these people that ugh, just all in between the cool stuff is these shitty ass articles and it and it'll be from people that will you know uh, it might be an artist that i really like you know and i don't want to unfollow them because they they do post art all the time and i want i still want to see that um yeah yeah and then it'll be like you'll scroll like see cool cool and then you'll see something that's like ugly and you'll almost like swipe it away real quick just to like get it out of your yeah. screen but like that person you're still following that person doesn't the, your first instinct is to swipe it away not to take this conscientious decision to like mute this person or something you right. know like but you know like you you said something that i thought would be uh an interesting feature like for every bad post something good what if like you know people's social media accounts like had like a ratio like a right. feature you know where it's like this this account is you know out of 100 like 70 right. bad 30 good and then you decide what you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Maybe it's yeah. too vague of a feature, but like that, no, would, that like, wouldn't be a bad idea, right? Or like you, you, you only have a certain amount of, I don't, you know, I don't know how there'd be have to be some algorithm that would determine what's positive and negative, but then that's a subjective thing, so it's. Or well, maybe like do, li likes but, and dislikes that little you know like yeah but YouTube. I was gonna say like like you only have a certain amount of negative shit that you could post before you get like 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 it like it locks you know like now you have to post this many positive articles until you can post negative articles again or something but again that's like subjective that's kind of like you know like a self-driving car if, it, if it's if it's in a situation where it has to swerve and is is, is it going to kill that one person or is it going to kill like five people and is that one person an old lady or and the, and the five people are kids like you know it's just these things that it's you know just impossible yeah, to tell that, but uh, but mm -hmm. you know like i'm aware that there's obviously duality in life you know like there's positive and negative and I'm, I'm completely uh and i know things you know we need to spread awareness about about a lot of negative things like i get it um but well, it's just like it just i don't know i feel like posting like being made aware yo guys this bad thing happened today is one thing but then being like yo this bad thing happened and on top of that, this guy said this thing about this other person. Like, it, they, they get too mixed up in the in the gray of like subjectivity, you know. And then that's when people really start to, you know, overreact over the more frivolous things rather than the right. actions, you know. Right. But yeah, man. I mean, listen. I wanted to ask you real quick, bro. Just more on some like, uh, you know, when you, when you paint, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's let's get back to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you like, okay, writers get writer's block. Do yeah. you sometimes like? You know, you know how when sometimes you get a little, oh man, I'm not really feeling it today. Right. Like, what do you do? What do you do to kind of like recalibrate your creativity before you mm -hmm. get back into it? Hmm. Um. I don't get like a block anymore, really, because uh, right. most of the stuff I do, like if I'm doing something for Marvel, it's like okay, like it's this character. And uh, even if they don't, even if my editor doesn't have some kind of um, concept or direction for me, I still know. Okay, I, like it's this, it's this specific character, and I basically always know that character, and um, I just I can portray that character how I want. So, like my point is that there's source material. Like there's source material for me to be inspired by. Um, 
if we're talking about my own personal artwork, um, I'm, I'm working on, on a really big project that I work on rarely because I'm very fortunate to have a lot of, a lot of paid gigs and, and commercial work, but uh, it's a story that I wrote. Um, and it's like a graphic novel. So, I mean, it's, I've been working on it for years. It's going to take me years to come. But I wrote the story, and now I'm drawing all the panels and the pages. So, like, there's no block to be had because the story's written. So now I'm just drawing the, I'm just, I'm drawing the book. Um, writing that story was difficult. Um, but, again, but, he, but now, once again, the story is derived from a dream that I had. Uh, it's an adaptation of a dream that I had, so I had a good source for the story. You know, I had a super, super vivid dream that I turned into this story. Um, um, so I totally did not answer the question. But if no, I'm gonna no, no, if no, I'm no. gonna answer the question if for somebody who would be in that position, because you know I haven't always been. Um, where I'm at now, where I have all this work and I have this story, this big giant story that I'm writing. Um, I would just say, just to go back, just kind of go back into your comfort zone. You know, if you don't know what to do, um, but you know, you like drawing whatever faces, uh, flowers, what, whatever, man, just, just draw what you like, draw what you like and try to, uh, Try to, while you're drawing it, try to do something you've never done before or start out making a few stray marks and try to turn that into something or um, limit yourself, you know, draw with one line, try to, you know, just, there's so many things, so many exercises. It's like, uh, you know, weightlifters at the gym, when they hit that, that plateau, like, what do they do? You know, I mean, it's there, there's, there's a form of that block in every in every genre and every uh you know and and you know and, and everything man and, and it's up to you how, how you, how you want to overcome it i mean so so like you're basically saying like just to generalize it like just walk away and do something different for a minute you know to like deco just, just to kind of empty that cup out and then it'll start to fill up again. walking away is a big deal man yeah like maybe you do need to take a day or two off and try not to uh if I take a day off, I you know, I'll oh, I, I didn't do anything that day. You know that can that can get to me. But um, sometimes, yeah, sometimes you, you you do need to take a day off. But um, you could do that. But but then also uh, the opposite of that. Do just just jump right into your comfort zone. Jump right into your comfort zone. Draw something that you know you're good at drawing. Um, but do it with one eye closed. Do it with your wrong hand. Do it with um, a type of pencil or a type of instrument that you don't normally use. Mm. So it's like you have that comfort zone uh, cushioning, but then you're 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 doing it in an uncomfortable way, um, and then that's definitely going to yield some kind of uh, unpredictable result. Yeah, okay. You know, um, that's the first time. I'm not gonna lie. Like I've had this. I've asked that question. So, uh, so a few people like over the years you know like man like what do you do especially like riders you know what do you do when you get riders black oh i go for a bike ride like what i do i go for a bike ride right. and it comes to me well i'll do that if i'm working on a painting that i've been working on for a long time and i'm like fuck i'm working on this for so long like i don't know like something's off but i don't know what's off or i've just been staring at it for so long that's when taking a break is a big deal take a walk um work on something else for a day don't look at it uh, flip it, uh, you know, in Photoshop, you can flip it like horizontally, or if you're working on a painting, hold it up into the mirror and look at it in a different way, hold it upside down. Um, t t uh, this, oh man, this, this helps so much a lot, man. Like t take a picture of it with your phone. It's crazy how I'll think something's done. And then if it's digital, I'll save like, I'll save it as like a little low res web image and then look at it small. Or if it's a painting, I'll take a picture of it with my phone and look at it on my phone and I'll see all these flaws mm -hmm. and then I'll go on it. And then there's, then I have all this shit to fix. And I'm like, how did I not see that? I've been working on this for days, weeks. And I didn't, how did I not see that? Yeah. And it's just weird how like the, the eye and the brain, like when it sees it in a different way, when it sees it smaller, um, when it sees it again, flipped, let flipped horizontally, it just you just see you just see things that that you never saw before i don't know what the equivalent of that would be uh for writing maybe like uh, uh, record I mean, it and, and slow it down or speed it up or nah, i don't know now nah, i would say that the, the equivalent of that um might be you know you, you, you're writing a verse or a song and then 
you're focused so much on like let's say the second verse you know and then you know you're writing you're, you're, you're getting together the second verse you record it and then you 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 stop the record and you run it all the way back and you hear it from the beginning yeah and you'll be like damn yeah. i'm not crazy about how this sounds in the beginning yeah. and i really get into my groove later on i'm gonna have to recut the beginning yeah better, you know and then that makes me think um if i'm in photoshop and i'm working with layers or maybe I save different versions of the painting and I'm at a point where I don't know what to do and I'll go back and look at an earlier version and I'll be like, damn, I love that. Where did I go wrong? You know? And then occasionally I'll paint it kind of backwards. I'll like paint, I'll, I'll kind of make it look like the earlier version. I'll be like, yeah. damn, I like this better. Like I just, I just overworked it. Yeah. You know, you, you could overthink it. You could just be overthinking your rhymes or like certain words and for sure, you for know? sure. Yeah. That's why they say, like, man, like, some of your best stuff is the stuff that you work the least on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's funny how that works. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you said something that reminded me when you're like, man, I know, like, you take a picture, you look at it from your phone, and you didn't, you're looking at this painting all day, but, you, like, you lost sight of something over here, something over there. It's yeah. kind of like, you play chess? I, I've, I played chess one time. That's it. Really? I liked it, though. Man. Yeah, I just never got into it. Okay, now, nah, it reminds me of chess because you'll be like really trying to protect the queen right and then you move your piece this way and that just completely opens yeah. up yeah. and they just you know that's it game over yeah so it's funny how man little parallels word man that's cool bro because you know writer's block or like cr creative block man some people just including me i'm sure all of us go through it like sometimes that totally like defeats us and because we we question our Mm, like how we can overcome this this bump in the road you know man how can i just right. i don't want to just trash this piece or whatever so that advice you're talking about man just approach it Ch a different man, way, and also know? like don't look at it as a block look at it like maybe like you're not supposed to be working at this moment or 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 you're or this song is not meant to be you know because uh a lot of the most meaningful um and and enriching experiences in my life i didn't have to try to do you know um relationships whether it be a you know meeting a girl or or, or friends or um uh, i just moved uh, into a new apartment um situations like that where when you don't have to do much and the situation just sort of falls into place those are the most meant to be meaningful um experiences in life um so for you know forcing something you could force it it could come together it could come to fruition if you force it but it's just not going to be as as uh or organic yeah it's just it's just just not going to mean as much man it's just it's just it's just not going to be as as fruitful it's not going to bring it's not going to you know what I'm trying to say? It's just yeah, not, yeah, it's sure. not going to be. Yeah, yeah, I got you. It's not going to be one of those experiences, man. Like the best experiences are just things that just you don't have to do anything. The universe just like you're you're in symphony with the universe. You yeah, know, for you're sure. not you're not. Uh, there's no static. You know, you're not trying to. Um, you know, you don't got to take the the cassette out, and blow on it, or you know, whatever. <laughs> right, right. Clean a CD or um, whatever. Let me ask you something, decal man. Like you said something about like, oh, like when you just get a new apartment. All right, like, you know, you've done a lot of traveling in a, in a bunch of cities. If you had to pick a city outside of Miami to live in, like, from your travels, which one would you like to to live in to get a spot at? Um. I'm biased because I grew up here and I do not do well in the cold. So that just eliminates all the all the cities pretty much north of Atlanta, but f even without that, like I really love Puerto Rico, man. I went to Puerto Rico twice. And um again, I you know, I just I, I was I was in San Juan, so Again, people always ask me when I, you know, oh, when you travel, how's this city? How's that city? It's hard for me to tell because I'm always in like the more downtown like area where the convention center is and stuff. So I don't really get to see too much of the city, but I just, just the vibe of the people when I was in Puerto Rico, man, like um, a lot of times my art will be on my, on the table and I'll have my portfolio and people will just come and I, and I just kind of watch how they touch the art and, 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 and handle the portfolio. They'll turn the pages and leave it, 
leave all the pages in the back, you know, or and just the kind of questions they ask me. But it, man, just the people in Puerto Rico were just super polite, super um, uh, appreciative that that the Comic Con was going on and that all the artists came to came there and, and everything. Like no in, no entitlement, you know. Um, and just I just really like the the vibe, you know. Um, uh, a lot of cities I go to, it's just like another big metropolitan city. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah so, yeah. yeah like, like so, some people be like throwing, just flipping through your bind and just yeah, leaving it. They're all raggedy. And like, just their kids, like they're like their kids will come and just flip through and they won't even like care that their kids are just, you know, fingering through all the artwork and everything. Uh, not all the time, you know, a lot of time that's all, you know, they'll t- tell the kid behave or whatever, but yeah. Um, you know, just just generally speaking, man. When I was in Puerto Rico, there's just way more, um, just like kind of politeness and and just just care. Um, okay. Just so so, yeah. so you're definitely a closer to the equator for sure kind of guy, yeah. man. You know, like it's funny. Like I'm I'm totally a tropical dude as well because I grew up here. But like when I ventured off outside of Miami to explore the country, for there's something about like the Salt Lake cities and the you know utah uh or like you know uh arizona nevada like yeah. so, something about that desolate with the right. big mountains in the background like man i really really like that right and i haven't done i mean i've, I've traveled but i pretty much stay on the east coast like I've, I've been to i went to seattle once um and then i went to san francisco for like a before i was even doing comics not even for a convention but that's what is that like like the 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 midwest would that be arizona or uh no no the midwest is kind of like uh you know like arizona would just be like the west like yeah yeah pretty much yeah so like the west the west and the west coast um are something are places that i've have have very little experience in so i don't i don't know um but but i'm into that man like uh 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 like sedona i want to go to sedona just it's Mm -hmm. like i've just seen pictures and i've heard it's just super beautiful and and the stones and the mountains and the desert yeah that's something i would i definitely want to get over there well well, just something just uh you know it's just like uh, when i travel it's just like i go to a city it's like if i if I could just have amnesia and like didn't even know I, I just took a plane trip to another city and I could just like wake up in, in, in the other city, I wouldn't even know the difference, man. It's just like another big city, another hustle and bustle kind of place, people just doing whatever they can do. Um, they got to pay their bills. They got to do this. They got to do that. Like a lot of the cities I've gone to, it's just the same shit, man. It's just, it's just all the same. And I've always thought that like, damn, like, like I remember when I went to Toronto for the first time it's like oh i'm out of the country even though it's you know kind of a, a still you know north america or whatever but i was like damn toronto is just like a, 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 a big metropolitan city i was like damn i'm in another country and it's just the same shit it's just a big city skyscrapers people mm-hmm. everywhere doing the same things man interesting uh, but it's that's like, that's human it's just human nature it's just that's just what we do we just move places we just build and and uh build a society and and uh, operate as humans, you know. If you um, if you ever the next the next time you find yourself in California, and you have like let's say a couple days free time, and you're willing to explore, and you're in North California, like San Francisco, how you mentioned, man, look up. I'm, it's it's hours away, but man, that drive is therapeutic. You get me? Like look up the spot called like I mean I'm I don't know if you remember it, but it's called Shelter Cove, right? Okay. Shelter Cove is like you can only get to it by one road mm. or by a very small airplane right. you know and you go there and it's just like two and three story wooden houses deer everywhere right. a couple of restaurants and like there's this like just man it's just a little magical you get me because yeah. i'm not i'm not crazy about big cities either you yeah. know yeah I, like, I want something like i would love to visit that place but if i was gonna live somewhere i want something between a big city and what you just said just something Something chill, man. Just something where like all the resources of a city are there, but it, you could just you could escape it. It's not like mm, that everywhere like... you go. Like my my quote for New York City is like I love going to New York City and I love leaving New York City. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I say funny. that all the time. It's it's just too much. It's too much for me. Maybe uh you know that kind of sounds like like the happy medium will kind of sound kind of like like a Santa Cruz. You know, in California, yeah. like Santa Cruz, it's like it has everything that a big city has, right. but it's just a lot smaller and a lot less rowdy. 
you know right less traffic but everything's there everything all the main stores that a city has yeah yeah word i mean i don't know like i love florida you know you know what now like speaking of florida like what would you say is some of your favorite things about just staying in miami like what is it about miami for you that keeps you here um definitely i i i really like the mixture of culture man that's that's big for me i don't like going to places where it's kind of all one thing um um i don't know i forgot the term but it's like like it kind of happens on the internet when someone posts something and then everybody's like kind of agreeing you know like oh co- conforming maybe yeah something like that but i i just i i like i like a lot of perspectives you know um so uh it's just out of all the places i've traveled to i've never seen such a cultural mix um like like south florida in general um so i like that um um the like food there's just so much different food um um mentalities you know you can have just assholes and then you can have like (laughs) yoga gurus like on the same block yeah yeah for sure um and i like that you know because assholes have their place and yoga yoga gurus have their place and (laughs) they wouldn't each of them wouldn't wouldn't mean anything without the other right you know the duality exactly for sure um so there's just so much of that in south florida just such a mixing uh, such a such a mixing pot um okay word yeah and then just and visually you know i just i like you can go somewhere with this bunch of water you can go somewhere with buildings um I love Miami because Miami's like 10 different cities. You know, it's like you could say I'm from Miami, but that really doesn't mean anything, you know? Cause yeah, like what part? There's, you're, that's so nonspecific. Right. Um, well, well, uh, like, what are your thoughts on like Wynwood now with the with the artwork, <laughs> you know? Uh, did you get, do you get asked that a lot? Uh, not a lot, but enough. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. No, it's fine. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, like you have people bitter about gentrification, um, and it's completely legitimate to be for certain groups of people to be bitter about that. Um, but everything grows, everything changes, everything evolves, everything comes back to what it used to be, and then it happens again. Samsara, you know, the cycle of birth and death never ends. So this is part of Winwood's evolution you know it started as completely i don't know how it started as but i know what it's known for is uh a really shitty warehouse district um and then slowly artists came in and then galleries came in and now it's super mini mall hipster restaurant style like yeah so it's it's crazy you know i mean but then it's like um you look at a baby and you look at uh a 90 year old person and it's like holy shit that's the same thing but looks so different and then how much in 90 years did that baby go through to turn into that old person you know like so much and uh that old all the the effects that that old person had on all the people they met in their life um time it was net time you know that time was necessary to make that happen and evolution uh is necessary i mean you know like where where do we come from you know it's uh like look around you know like you're gonna be mad that there's buildings now like you're gonna be mad that we have air conditioning it's just like that's what happened you know things grow evolve we learn we learn from our mistakes um Okay. Yeah, so right. it's like when yeah, I, I miss a lot of things about Winwood, but now there's some other cool stuff about Winwood and if I really want to uh experience that cool stuff that Winwood used to have, then now it's my responsibility to find it to find it somewhere else or, or start it start it start it myself. Um and and create something new and just continue the cycle of of evolution and growing and changing and that's what we're all here to do you know sounds like you're on the path to enlightenment man for sure (laughs) you're like learning to appreciate something while it's there and understanding that it won't be there forever and acceptance man acceptance and surrender and the sooner people can learn to do that the the more easy their life will be and it's funny like you say that 
There's very few people that ever really get it, man, because it's so hard. It's me, so hard to do. Let me tell you, man, shameless plug. Like you saying that, that, that like, that rhetoric is pretty much like this project that I just dropped called Trans- Transit City. Yeah. That's what it's about, man. Like Miami is a transit city, but yeah. life, life itself is like a transit city. You have to understand that people are going to come, spend a few moments with you, right. and go, and you have to be okay with that. All right. And then, honor endings. That's something that I learned the hard way when I was a little bit younger. Um, honor endings. You know, everything ends. Um, and just because something, I mean, every time something ends, something else starts, you know? So, I mean, it's super cliche. When one door closes, no door opens. But it's yeah, like yeah. super true. Well, know? there's a reason why that phrase exists, you know? Right. And it still applies, you know? Yeah. So, like, for sure, man. Damn, that's awesome, bro. You know, um, hey, listen, not for nothing, man. Decal, I think that's a pretty good note to end this. Let's do it. Th- th- this podcast, bro. We've been talking for more than an hour. Yeah. You know? Um, for a... Uh, well, before before we fully end, I just want, bro, thank you, man. Thank yeah, you for man. coming thank through. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you're coming through. You're A1. You said you'll be here, and you came here on time, <laughs> 10 minutes early. <laughs> Everyone out there, man, punctuality, oh, it's the best. Yeah, Trust man. me. And, and like, even if you're not punctual, just send a text and say, I'll be late, or right. I can't make it. Like, right. <laughs> it's, so... it's not that hard, man. Like, that's a pet peeve of mine. Just, yeah, me too, man. Like, you don't, you don't have to do what you say, but if you're not going to do what you say... Say, tell the person you're not going to do what you say yeah you know? exactly man exactly <laughs> but really do it do what you say you know that's that's right. that's, that's the that's the first thing so um so bro decal thank you man best of luck with everything yeah thank you thank man. you oh, continuing with continuing with marvel uh dope job on south of fifth i just, you, just came out you know thank what i'm saying you, i feel like i see more paintings of recognizing pictures you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. um but word man so we're, we're going to go ahead and end this. If y'all want to check out Decal on social media, it's, it's just Jeff Decal, Everything's right? my name, jeffdecal.com, my Instagram, Twitter, Jeff Decal. Just Google Jeff Decal. Jeff right Decal, absolutely. If y'all haven't heard my project, Transit City, it's on all streaming platforms. This is Art Morera. This is episode 26 of the Media Noche podcast. We're in Miami, Florida. We out of here, man. Peace. Media Noche. Media Noche. Media Noche. Media Noche. Medianoche. 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 Podcast, podcast, podcast. Medianoche. Podcast, podcast, podcast. Medianoche. 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 Medianoche.